So let us read this problem. So we have to find resultant force exerted by the water on the dam. So basically we have to calculate resultant force. We have been given a dam. So this is the wall of dam. Water is filled up to a height of capital H. Width of the dam is W. Then we have to find what is the force that this water is applying over this dam. So you see first important point this water is applying a force everywhere on the wall of the dam. And this force is not constant because pressure is not constant. If you see at top point you have lesser pressure at highest point you have more pressure. This means force that is pressure into area is not constant. Force is variable. So you see at the top point I can say you will have lower force and bottom point we will have higher force. So I can say force is variable. Force on the wall of dam is variable with height or you can say with depth. So we need a method of integration. Let us define my y axis in the downward direction. So this is my y axis. So this is 0 and in this direction we have my y axis. Let us consider at a depth of y. So from top I am going a depth of y. Consider a strip and try to find what is the forces that is acting on this strip. So water is applying some force over this strip. So we are interested to calculate what is this force that is applied on this strip. So let us call this force as DF. So what is DF? That is force applied on a strip that is elemental area. And force is nothing but pressure into area. What is the elemental area? So let us first write pressure into area. So pressure and what is area? This width is W and let us consider height of elemental strip is dy. So area is W into dy. So this is W into dy. Now next important point we have to calculate what is the pressure we have at this point that is y is equals to y what is the pressure we have? So pressure is given by P0 plus rho GH or I can say atmospheric pressure is given P atmospheric pressure. So I am going below at a height of Y so I can say P at Y is basically equals to P atmospheric pressure plus rho GH where rho is the density of water. So now I can write pressure is nothing but P atmospheric pressure plus rho GH into W into dy and in this case H is nothing but equals to Y so I am going in the downward direction so H is Y so same equation can be written as P atmospheric plus rho ZY W into dy. So this is the elemental force DF and now only we need integration. So if I sum all these forces, so this is the force over this elemental area. If I sum all these forces, that is if I change by, I can get total force over this wall. So we have rho 
rows y into dy into w. If I integrate both sides, we can get total force that is now force on wall and this is easy to calculate. So I have to integrate w is constant. So let us take this constant outside plus rho z y into d y and y goes from 0 to h. So this is w integration of p atmospheric pressure into d y simply p atmospheric pressure into y and this is rho z y is by square by 2 and we have to integrate from 0 to capital H. So this is w plus p atmospheric pressure into h plus rho g h square by 2. So this is the force on ball. And the unit for force is Newton. Let us discuss more about the same problem. One design aspect of this problem is if you see at top the thickness of this wall is less but at the bottom we have higher thickness. So you see note that the thickness of the dam shown in the figure increases with the depth. So as you go depther and depther you will have more thickness. And this design account for the greater and greater pressure that water exert on the dam at greater depth. So let us try to understand. If I draw pressure versus depth curve. So you see pressure at a different depth is given by P atmospheric pressure plus rho z into y. This is the pressure. So at this top point when y is equals to 0, when y is equals to 0, so let us say if I draw a diagram, this is my y is equals to 0. When we have y is equals to 0, pressure is simply P atmospheric pressure. So pressure is here, that is P atmospheric pressure. If I increase by now, pressure will increase linearly. So at this point, this is the pressure. At this point, let us say we will have higher pressure. And even lower point, I will have even higher pressure. Even higher pressure. At bottom point, you will have very high pressure. So pressure varies linearly. Something of this kind of curve we will have. This means at this point, if I draw the same diagram here, it will look something like this. So you will have higher pressure here, lesser pressure here, even less pressure here, even less pressure here, less pressure. And here you will have only P atmospheric pressure. So as we are going below or is you, as you are going at a greater depth, you will have high pressure. To account for the fact that the pressure is high, you must have to have thickness should be more. So I can say at greater depth, thickness of the wall should be more and this will account for the increase in pressure and that is basically increase in force because pressure increases, force is nothing but pressure into area that also increases, force increases. So I have to increase the thickness. So we have to increase the thickness of the wall. And that is design criteria basically here we will have. Now can we solve this problem without using calculus? That is without using integration. So let us say if I does not know integration, can I still solve the problem? 
Now in this case, if you see pressure varies linearly, so pressure is varying linearly. So on the dam, the force that is acting that varies linearly. So now we can use the idea of average. So in case of linear function, so this is a linear pressure variation. In case of linear function, we can use the idea of average. So let us find what is the average pressure that is P top and what is the P bottom. So we know P top is nothing but P atmospheric pressure and P bottom this is equals to P atmospheric pressure plus rho g h and h is capital H. So we will have P average that is equals to P top plus P bottom by 2 Now this is P atmospheric pressure plus P atmospheric pressure plus rho g h and this divided by 2. So we will have P atmospheric pressure plus rho g h by 2. So this is the average pressure. So now we can write force on the ball is equals to average pressure multiplied by area. Average pressure is P atmospheric pressure plus rho g h by 2 and area is nothing but W so this side we have width is W and height that is total height that is H so area is H into W so now we will have P atmospheric pressure into H plus rho g h square by 2 and this multiplied by w that is total force we have now p atmospheric pressure into h plus rho g h square by 2 and this multiplied by w if you see the previous result that is here you have P atmospheric pressure into H plus rho g h square by 2 into W. That is the same value. So we can use calculus, calculus or even we can use the idea of average pressure. So average pressure we can use only without the pressure varies linearly so idea of average can be used only because there is a linear variation of pressure.